Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to try out the Aerial Simulations F117A recently released in the marketplace for $20. I couldn't resist because it is after all a unique plane. It's not a very fast plane. Uh, normally I go with the flat fast planes but it is a unique plane. We will not see the likes of it ever again because it was trying to be stealthy at a time when they had very limited processing power. And basically the limiting processing power of computers at the time was what determined its shape. Nowadays we can make much more normal looking aircraft stealthy, uh, but it was a sort of a unique time to create a stealthy plane and this is what we got. I like uniqueness and obviously I picked it up. So we'll see how good it is. The F-117 was well known to be a difficult plane to fly because of its interesting aerodynamics. It is a strangely shaped plane and that's another reason why it's not going to be duplicated. It's not a very good shape. Uh, it did require computers to control it, a uh, fly-by-wire system. And the last time I flew, I flew uh, one F-117 in a sim it was all the way back in the mid 90s. It was the old F-117A Nighthawk stealth fighter game. And I played the heck out of that. That was Microprose. And that was a good game. I liked that. But obviously not the highest fidelity F-117 simulation that one could imagine. So, but it's basically I haven't flown it in a sim since then. So I, well, we'll see how this works. Uh, they say that it is realistic. And actually, why don't we take a look at the Marketplace page? Let's see what they have promised us. Okay, so here's the Marketplace page. Uh, they've got detailed animations, blow-in doors, aerial, aerial refueling door, canopy, uh, glare shield, bomb bay doors, trapeze, and payload. Though obviously not functional, and I don't think they can depict the uh, weapons in the Marketplace version. APU door, tail hook. Uh, the tail hook's interesting. Uh, I wonder when we're going to get those carriers into the regular free flight part of the game instead of just uh, those challenges for Top Gun. A radar cross-section monitoring system. That's a different RCS than normal. Interesting. Custom drag shoot simulation. Okay. So anyway, on that note, let's take it out. I'm going to fly it from Nellis down to Edwards Air Force Base, and we will see how that works. Let's get a better time. Okay, so here is the cockpit, and it looks reasonably good. Texturing very well done, I think. And the seat is good. The edges of the canopy, of course the canopy tint is realistic. And let's take a look at what we have. Of course we have that HUD, and in terms of the tactical stuff, we're not going to have anything that's actually implemented. Attack radar. I guess the radar could be useful. Anyway, the HUD is fine. That didn't actually return to normal. Um, target data, of course not. No. Those, nope, go back. GPS, no GPS. Mids, no mids. Bit, no bit. But engine, yes engine. We've got those numbers there. And actually, uh, fuel is here. We've got the fuel there. And we also, if we go to engine, have fuel. Oh, that fuel doesn't work. Interesting. Okay. And so, given the choice, I think we'll go with the fuel there. Always good. So that's the interior basically. Uh, these look cheap a bit, of course. Actually, uh, on the side, it's not bad for sightseeing except for the tint, but the front is these. Uh, yeah, I don't know the, what the logic was for making it look like this, but it looks pretty good from the outside. In fact, it looks better than I ever thought it was. I had a plastic model of it as well, a 48 scale one. Okay. We've got those extra intakes on the top. Alright, well, let's see how it goes. So, I'm fully loaded with fuel. And we will see the takeoff speed. I'll try and rotate and see 
where we actually get off the ground. It should be reasonably hard. This thing has a lot of bulky body and less swing than you think. Caution. Well, I guess that's to rotate. Uh, uh. Okay, we're off 180 basically, but maybe I could have pulled up harder. You're gonna need a fair amount of runway. I mean, it doesn't have normal flaps or anything. Well, we should try and stay low here. Feels pretty easy to fly right now. The upper intake doors have closed. Very good. I would say it's much easier to fly than I thought. Well, at least at this speed. If you're trying to go slower, it's probably going to be more stressful. But here... Very nimble, uh, definitely a fly-by-wire feel to it. It's sort of looking a little cute, <laughs> the way it's uh, flying about. Uh, from inside, I mean the tint really doesn't make it easy on you. Of course it was meant to fly at night and everything. But on the whole, controllability is pretty good. I think you can have a decent amount of fun with this. I wonder why all the vehicles are sort of in rows and chunks. It's sort of chunk. They get the little packs of vehicles. Oh shoot! Okay. I I, it's, uh, I don't know why it started to go down suddenly. Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. This time I'll take the takeoff from outside and we will see, I'll try to rotate as much as possible and I'll just report because I'll have the speed in an outside window with a little nav map, I'll just report the speed that it takes off at. Okay, here we go. Okay, 120 knots, and I'll try and rotate here. Hundred sixty. Okay, we can sorta of get off at hundred and sixty. Again, full tanks. Okay, well I don't know if we wanna have a repeat of what I did last time. I think maybe we should just go higher this time and actually try to get to Edwards. So alright, up we go. I wouldn't recommend trying aerobatics in it, mind you, uh, but now that we've got some height, uh, well that was very fly-by-wire the way it turned. And yeah, it's stable inverted. I guess maybe you could try some aerobatics. I don't know if it should be able to though. I don't know what's happening with the HUD glass there. Okay, okay, well let's just get on with the flight. We have the fuel quality and the engine stuff right there. There's, there's not a whole lot we can do with the right multifunction display to be honest. It does look good. Like I said, it uh, looks better than I remembered it. I've never been too enthusiastic about the F-117 before, but sort of growing on me. The, the thing that always trips me up is the nose bit. The nose slope. 
where there's the initial slope. The, the slope is basically the opposite of how you would expect a plane to want to be, <laughs> as far as curvature is concerned. It's shallow and then it goes steeper, but I guess it's okay. Edges, of course, not normally a happy aerodynamic thing. My ground speed is only 158 right now, so we ought to be stalling. 120, 127. Well, the stall characteristics are very mild, actually. We just uh, went up a little bit too quickly. So, fairly easy to recover it, it would seem. So, sort of as expected, it didn't really have a high rate of climb. I tried to climb it faster than it ought to have been going, and we lost speed very quickly. Right now, I'm at full throttle. And we're climbing fairly mildly, uh, but we're at 262 knots indicated. Service ceiling was only 43 to 45,000 feet. Max rate of climb was 2,820 feet per minute, according to Wiki. So, since we are losing speed, you can see um, that validates that. Considering the fuel flow of the engines at this altitude, uh, we could probably get. Uh, three hours worth of endurance. It's true that the, I guess the F-117 didn't carry a radar. Certainly not a normal radar, so this attack radar, I don't even know if they'd have the section like that. It's sort of a generic multifunction display implementation, I suppose. There is no afterburner. I'd like one, but <laughs> definitely no afterburner. We have a lot of control surface deflection considering we're not climbing very much. In theory, this is capable of Mach 0.92. Well, I'm gonna level out and see what it can do. Climbing too fast is probably not a good thing. Yeah, my recommendation is definitely do not uh, go up too quickly, otherwise you'll be stuck at 30,000 feet accelerating very, very slowly. It's probably better to maintain speed than try to pick it up again. It accelerated pretty well uh, down closer to the surface. Keeping that speed would have been a good idea. <laughs> Instead of trying to climb quickly like, uh, you know, Fighter jets often do, but this definitely does not. I think I'm gonna have just enough time before we get to Edwards in order to accelerate to Mach 0.92, which is supposed to be the limit for this thing. Or maybe, I, I, I mean, really, Mach 0.83 is not too bad. We're going airliner speeds now. Uh, we might get there. We are currently about 60 nautical miles away from Edwards Air Force Base. I need to figure out if one of the liveries doesn't have a tinted window though. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, the edge here is a little bit iffy, but honestly, what are you going to do? There is an FCS reset switch. I want to see if it's possible to switch off the... We can't toggle these trim controls. There is the autopilot there. And so that's to engage it. Pitch mode, nav mode, channel select. The lights are there. I don't think we can outright turn off the FCS. No, I would not think so. No canopy eject. The generator and hydraulic pump and APU we can start, so probably the startup stuff is all good. The generators, external power, battery. ILS is there, that's convenient. Uh, attack hand, very clear. And we can certainly toggle that stuff. Okay. Cockpit temp does not work, but that's fine. Antenna is apparently a thing. They did mention the antenna. 
engine bleed air, that's probably part of the startup procedure. Canopy open and close is right there. Anti-ice, windshield, the ice, the normal stuff for flight sim. Okay, Mach 0.88 now. 0.89. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll take a while if we... Yeah, it's definitely not eager to go too much faster than this. Transonic drag can't be helping. This is... I guess there might be area ruling somewhat, but jeez. 0.9, Mach 0.9, I'm happy. Let's descend. Engine core RPM 75, and you can see our descent rate that we are not accelerating. <laughs> it does get a significant amount of drag, this. Okay, continuing to descend into Edwards Air Force Base. Oh, uh, there's the runway actually. Okay, let's try and get below these clouds here. And I really need this thing to slow down now. Does that have air brakes? We know about the parachute. No, I, I didn't think it had air brakes, and it doesn't seem to. Well, we'll uh, we'll manage. Okay, landing gear down. Oh, jeez, look at all this. Just one of those days at Edwards. Okay, landing gear looking good. Uh, it's acceleration. The acceleration is weird a bit. <laughs> it is so. It is weird. We are pretty heavy still. We didn't go very far. Ooh, ooh, uh, they didn't want to pull up. Ah, uh. Okay, well, hmm. Yeah, right at the end. Uh, the fly-by-wire was sort of fighting me a little bit there. When I wanted to just sort of gently pull up, it didn't want to pull up. It was sort of delayed. There was sort of a delay in the reaction. I didn't use the parachute or anything. I wonder how you activate the parachute. Well, I guess I'll figure that out sometime. But we didn't need it. The runway here at Edwards is huge after all. So, alright. Well, I don't know. The taxiway's way over there. Okay, we are gonna taxi over there, but I'm just about done here. Oh, there's another plane there. I wonder what that is. Anyway, so, with that, look at the F-117 by Aerial Simulations available in the marketplace. My tires, are my tires flat or something? Anyway. Uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.